we remember things that make emotional impacts on us. And I always think, like, man, that 500 square foot space, people will have no idea what transpired there. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to risk everything. My pops was a presser and a dry cleaner. That's what he used to put money on the table for us. I was living in Harlem then, and we lived in a tiny one-bedroom apartment. My pops, he said, son, living in this country makes it uniquely possible for someone who comes from circumstances I do to make something of it. When I was like 19, I was a doorman. And one of the more frequent complaints when I was a doorman was about their dry cleaner. Because in the morning when they'd leave for work, the cleaner was closed. And by the time they got back home late at night, the cleaner was also closed. So I thought that there was an opportunity there to create a mobile dry cleaner. But for the longest time, it felt like now wasn't the time. I was providing quite a bit for the family. My parents were nervous because an immigrant family does not move to the United States so that your son can clean people's dirty underwear. And it took me a while, but something clicked at some point. An entrepreneur, by definition, takes extraordinary financial risk. And I realized, oh, the opportunity cost of waiting is massive. Why not now? Shortly afterward, I quit my job to do it full time. But I told one resident in particular, I said, well, what are you going to go do? I said, well, I'm going to start a mobile dry cleaning service. I said, you're going to start a what? I said, I'm gonna start a mobile dry cleaner. Why? I said, dude, I've been in film and TV the past 25 years. We have yet to find a single dry cleaner that can meet our crazy demands. I told him I was gonna work harder than anyone he's ever worked with his, in his life. He looked at me and said, come up to upstate New York, bring a big ass truck. We're gonna load you up. This was my lucky break. I took it to my father. He pressed those garments so masterfully. After that, Law & Order. Cool. Person of interest, white collar, Amazing Spider-Man 2, Unforgettable, The Nick. We dominated 90% of the film and the TV industry in New York City. Eventually it was enough. A larger competitor stepped in and made us an all-cash offer to buy the business. I didn't tell my parents when I was in negotiations because I didn't want to get their hopes up or anything. I said, hey guys, when we sat down, I wrote a check and turned around and said, that's for you guys. <laughs> I never would have thought that growing up with my pops pressing in a sweatshop that that would give me an edge where I can then win over the film industry and like, you know, I would never have occurred to me in my wildest dreams. But now looking back, I grew up in a situation that perhaps seemed less than ideal. But on the flip side of that coin, there's a world of possibility.